Hello, this is Andy from the Engineers Academy and in this topic we're going to be looking at some of the graphical techniques that can be used to solve engineering problems. Now we're going to begin this topic by looking at how we plot straight line graphs but more specifically how we use data for straight line graphs in order to determine the equations for that graph. So just before we begin plotting any graphs it's important to point out that the format of the equation for any straight line graph is y equals mx plus c. Now c in this equation is called the y-axis intercept. And essentially all that means is it's the point where our straight line graph crosses the y-axis or crosses the point where x equals zero. We also have here m which is the gradient of the line. The gradient is the slope of the line. And the way that we calculate gradients is by doing the change in y between two points on the graph divided by the change in x between those two points. And we'll look at this with some specific examples in a moment. But what we would have is we would have the y coordinate for a second point minus the y coordinate for a first point divided by the x coordinate for that second point minus the x coordinate for that first point. So once we plot data and determine the gradient and determine the intercept with the y-axis, we're then able to state the equation for that straight line graph. So what we have on the left-hand side of the screen here is some data for some coordinate points. We have the x-coordinates in this left-hand column and the corresponding y-coordinates in the right-hand column. So our first point has the coordinates minus 12, minus 8. When x equals minus 12, y equals minus 8. Just as a reminder, this is our x-axis and this is our y-axis. So our first data point, when x equals minus 12, y equals minus 8, gives us a data point down there in the bottom left quadrant. Then we've got when x equals minus 10, y equals minus 7, which gives us a second data point. We've got when x equals minus 8, y equals minus 6. When x equals minus 6, y equals minus 5. And we can continue plotting each of those data points as we move through. When x equals 2, y equals minus 1. When x equals 4, y equals 0. All the way through to our final point, which is when x equals 12, y equals 4. Now hopefully you can see what we have there is a straight line graph. If we sketch that through, we're looking for two things. The first thing we're interested in is where that graph cuts the y-axis. And in this case, we can see it cuts the y-axis at minus 2. Therefore, our intercept C is minus 2. And we're also interested in the gradient of that line. Now, as I explained, the gradient of a line is the change in y over the change in x. So what we're going to look for is a simple triangle. And I'm going to use the triangle here running along here. So this triangle here. The gradient is the change in y over change in x. Well, our change in y will be the change in y going from point 1 here to point 2 here. And our change in x will also be the change in the coordinates, but this time the x-coordinates as we go from point 1 to point 2. Well, going from point 1 to point 2, we can see that the y-coordinate of point 2 is 4, and the y-coordinate of point 1 is 0. And we can see that the x-coordinate of point 2 is 12, and the x-coordinate of point 1 is 4. Therefore, our gradient is 4 over 8, which is 0 0.5. We now have everything we need to define that line. The equation of this line is y equals m is the gradient, so 0 0.5, x plus c, which is the y-axis intercept. And we can see here that the y-axis intercept is actually a negative number this time. Therefore, our equation becomes y equals 0.5x minus 2. 
Let's look at a different set of data this time. This time we have x coordinates ranging from minus 2 to 8, and we have y coordinates ranging from plus 2 to minus 5.5. One of the things that you need to get into the habit of doing is setting up your axes such that all of those data points can be plotted. And the other thing that's good practice is to try to maximise the space on your page. What you want to do is get the axes as big as possible in the scales that you have available to you. So I've set up these axes here to accommodate these data points and we're going to go through exactly the same process as we did before. We have our x-axis and we have our y-axis. Our first data point is x is minus 2, y is 2. Then we have x is minus 1, y is 1.25. So when I've plotted that point, I can see where y equals 1 sits. I can see where y equals 2 sits. I can see where y equals 1.5 sits in the middle there. So 1.25 will be in the centre of that larger square. Next I have when x equals 0, y equals a half. When x equals 1, y equals minus 0.25. x equals 2, y equals minus 1 and so on, all the way down. And these data points are going to be sitting on a straight line once again. So now we can add on our straight line running through those data points. And once again, we're looking for two things. We're looking for our y-axis intercept, which can be seen here. And we can see the value there is 0 0.5. And we're also looking for the gradient of that line. Now I'm going to pick two data points. I'm going to pick data point 1 there and data point 2 there. So data point 2 is this one here when x equals 8 and data point 1 is this one here when x equals 2. So our gradient m is the change in y divided by the change in x which is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Well, y2 is minus 5.5. And the y coordinates of our first point is minus 1. Well, minus minus 1 is the same as plus 1. For our x coordinates, the x-coordinate of point 2 is 8, minus the x-coordinate of point 1, which is 2. Now minus 5.5 plus 1 is minus 4.5. 8 minus 2 is 6, giving us the final gradient of minus 0 0.75. Now we can define the equation of our line, and I'm just going to write it up here in the top right corner. y equals m, the gradient, which is minus 0 0.75, times x, plus y-axis intercept, c, which is 0 0.5. So y equals minus 0 0.75x plus 0 0.5. I think it's important to point out at this stage that if we have a negative gradient, then going from left to right, we have a downward slope to the line. And if we have a positive gradient, then going from left to right, we have an upward slope. So in this case, we would have expected a negative gradient because going from left to right, the graph slopes downwards. And in the previous example, we expected a positive gradient because the slope of the graph was upwards moving from left to right. And it's important just to carry out this check just to make sure that our gradient calculations are accurate. 